Hi, welcome to the Shepherd's Rest Doc Talk. Um, I'm Cam and we're here to talk about Passover. Uh, this is my fifth time and I'm pretty sick of it because of dogs and a baby possum and every other disturbance I can think of. It is a fabulous Shabbat. We're all chilling out at home and everyone has a voice today. So we're going to go through this one and this is my last attempt to do this. I wanted to talk really quick about two maybe three things that I saw in the Exodus the 12 reading that I wanted to bring up. It's going to be quick. In Exodus 12 verse 14, it says, And this day shall be to you a remembrance. This is talking about the, the offering of the lamb, putting the blood on the door. Okay, this is to be a remembrance. And you shall celebrate it as a festival of the Lord throughout your generations. It is uh, celebrated as a festival, as an everlasting law, meaning it's still important. Yeshua did it. If he did it, we should do it too. Then let's go to verse 17. It says, and you shall guard the, the matzah, the festival of matzah. On this same day, I brought your division out of the land of Egypt. And you shall guard this day throughout your generations in the everlasting law. Two things. One with Passover is to recognize and remember that the blood was on the door and we have been redeemed. He saved his people, protected them from death. Okay. The second thing is we should remember because he's bringing us out. All right. Okay. So, and that's the unleavened bread. So when we look at 17, excuse me, verse 14, where it talks about remembrance, Remembrance this has to do with the blood. We're going to remember that, the blood and being protected from death. When we look at that, the word remembrance, we also have that word in Leviticus 23, 24, having to do with the Feast of Trumpets. This That makes that the beginning of the fall feast, and this one is the beginning of the spring feast. How interesting that each of the cycles of feasts begin with something of remembrance. Remembering what happened so that we can recognize what's happening so we can recognize what is to come. All right, then let's look at the matzah part. The matzah part again, verse 17. This uses an interesting word. For that one, that law, it's ordinance. The reason why this is interesting because the word ordinance is, is a hook. Hook means something that we do that we don't really fully grasp why we do it. So the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is um, basically, you've seen some matzah, right? It's striped and it's got holes in it, all right? There's this bread that we are to eat. Um, unleavened bread is what's given as an offering. Leavened bread is never burned and offered to the Lord, never put into the fire. So we have this hook. I don't know why. We just eat unleavened bread. It's really important. That's what we do. You eat the unleavened bread, okay? It doesn't say just don't eat leaven bread. It says eat unleavened bread. So we are to take it in and digest it. Think about that. Doesn't Yeshua say that, oops, sorry, I kicked the camera. Doesn't Yeshua say eat this, eat all of me, right? He is the bread, the living bread of life. So eat all of this. It's the matzah. He is the unleavened bread that's able to be given as the offering because he was given as the offering, right? Now think about the remembrance side. On the remembrance side, he says, to remember, this is important, remember, so you can remember what's happening. Well, when Yeshua in uh, Luke twenty-two nineteen, 19, he says, take this bread, right, and eat it in remembrance, that should be a clue. That's why we want to know the Torah, because he says this is a remembrance, and now Yeshua is saying, remember me in the eating of the matzah, in this with the cup, right? This is the whole thing. This is understanding the remembrance of the blood on the wall to save us from the death. Messiah is remember him. Remember him because he is the one who is the blood upon us who saves us from eternal death. Egypt was the temporal. It saved us. It saved us Israel from a death on earth. But Messiah is the eternal who saves us, who saves Israel from an eternal death. Remembrance is so important. I love how it says here it's a day of remembrance. Because that remembrance 
is the day that Messiah died on the cross. It's a remembrance. We must remember it. But then the next day, which is the 15th of Nisan, that's the day, that's the day that Israel went out. That's when that redemption happened, right? When death tried to grab a hold of Yeshua and couldn't hold on because he had no sin. It couldn't hold on. And then eternal life was given. All right, that is there. That's what's happening. Think about this. For years and years, eating the unleavened bread, but not really understanding because it's a hook, but still going to do it. Those who come to understand the revelation of Messiah, like Peter talks about in 1 Peter and 2 Peter, who come to see the revelation of Messiah, then accept him, all right, they suddenly have an understanding of, oh, now I know why we eat the matzah. Now I see why we have striped and pierced bread that's broken and we eat it. Because that's what gives me the remembrance. So when Yeshua says, eat this as often as you can in remembrance of me, here, here's, we didn't know why, but now that ordinance becomes an understanding of why it's been done for so many years. Now I'm going to take this, I'm going to slide over. In 17, reading this again, it says, and you shall guard the feast of matzah. On the same day, I brought your divisions out of the land of Egypt. So remember the remembrance. And then when it's the next day of matzah, he's bringing them out, right? There's that deliverance. But only by the blood are we delivered. Okay? Sounds familiar? But I, I saw this and was like, wait a minute. Let's go over to verse... 41. It says, and it came to be at the end of the 430 years, on the same day it came to be that all the divisions of Yove went out from the land of Egypt. Not Israel, but all the divisions of the Lord, of Yove, went out. How interesting is that? This wasn't Israel that marched out in military style because they're going to be a nation. It talks about in 13... Um, Exodus 13, verse 18, where it says how they went out in fives or like in military rank. No, they didn't go out because they were Israel's army. They went out because they were God's division. God was pulling them out to be his warriors, to be his body, all right, as a whole. Now, I bring this up because now we're going to go to another verse, I'm kind of snaking it together. Let's look back at 12. Let's go look at verse um, 22. It says, And you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it, uh, dip it in the blood in the basin and strike the lintel, so the top, and the doorposts, the two doorposts, so the sides, with the blood that's in the basin. And you, none of you shall go out of the door of his house till morning. And the Lord shall pass over to smite the Egyptians and, sh um, and shall see the blood on the lintel and the two doorposts. And Yahweh, the Lord, shall pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to smite you. And we've talked about this in previous times about that being he's protecting. It's literally the protecting, okay? But anyway, that's not where I want to go. I want to show that it says that you, any of you, leave the house. That's interesting. Who died in Egypt? Only the firstborn died in Egypt. We see that in 12, verse 29 through 31. Only the firstborn of Egypt died. Yet anyone who left the house, who was inside the house with the blood and the lamb, would die. Isn't that interesting? It wasn't just a firstborn. It was all of them. Why is that? Why would there be such a dis possible destruction on anyone in the household that walked out versus just the firstborn? So here's my thought. Again, I don't know. It just came to me and I was like, oh my gosh, I think this is amazing. In Exodus 4, the Lord says, Israel is my firstborn and he's going to strike Pharaoh's firstborn. See, when in Egypt... Israel acted, acted as one. Israel, 
his people, those who joined themselves to his people, were his firstborn. Therefore, to strike his firstborn would have meant everyone in that body of Israel would have died. Hence, the preserving of all his firstborn. Because they're not a nation yet. They are just his people. They are this group inside of Egypt, the firstborn of the living God inside Egypt. Messiah is the firstborn. Let's go to now. Messiah is the firstborn of the living God. He's also the physical firstborn of Miriam, Mary. But in him, oh, I kicked the camera, sorry. Not kick the can, kick the camera. Oh, anyway. In him, all of us go into his body. Hence, we all become the firstborn. Whether we are born of the matrix of our mother as first or not, we're in his body, therefore we are a firstborn. The firstborn with Messiah, right? We are a part of the first fruit. You see? Israel there, it's the same pattern. Covered in the house with the blood. Once they came out, that protection would be removed. With the body, when we come out of his body, our protection is removed. It's the same pattern. And if we ignore the pattern he gave us in Exodus, then we deceive ourselves by patterns that we make up with Messiah. We want to be careful of that, right? Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, careful that we don't believe in vain, right? James talks about it. Careful that we don't just say, you know, oh, well, we believe he's one. The demons believe that also, right? Peter talks about it also. Careful that we don't deceive ourselves with the delusion that there is no more law, that the lawlessness is gone. And Peter even talks about that, uh, 2 Peter 3. He talks about that with Paul, that people are looking at Paul's writings and saying, oh, all of the Old Testament laws are done away with, ordinances. That means Passover. No, these things, if we don't understand them, we miss so much of who Messiah is and how we function within Messiah. So when the Lord, going back, so when the Lord pulled his division out, that's that one. They went into the house, they all came out. In Messiah, we go in, right? As his body, we walk. We're his feet, we're his hands. We're the soldiers, we're the ministers in his body, just like Israel was. When Israel was pulled out of Egypt, now they are going to walk through to go into a land. And when they go into the land, right, they're a nation. Well, actually before, but on the way. Once they become a nation and are recognized as a nation, the Lord now says, your firstborn will be given to me. I just wanted to bring that up, mainly to cap this off, about remembrance, right? Remembering as well as the ordinance of, of eating the unleavened bread, um, even before understanding why we did it, understanding that it's it's declared within um, the Brit Hashah, the New Testament. Then there's also the part of being the division and moving out and how anyone who went into the house under the blood and stayed there was protected and functioned as a whole. We go into Messiah through his blood, we are protected as a whole. But don't walk out. Then we're vulnerable. And if you notice, he said over here, anyone who walks out of the house, you'll, you'll die. Now, I'm not talking eternity. This isn't, a to this isn't an eternity topic. This is absolutely an earthly topic. You walk out, you're dead. Think of how many times we fall asleep early. I mean, Paul talks about that, right? Actually, he even talks about that with eating of the, um, the bread incorrectly, right? Taking communion incorrectly, which takes us to Passover, participating incorrectly in that we die early that's not eternal that's an earthly we have earthly consequences for our actions anyway not going to keep going that's why i wanted to end on just some cool thoughts um to add to your exodus 12 understanding to add to the more depth i guess of what all we're celebrating this week how those patterns help us understand these patterns and that it's, it's Y'all, this is our heritage. This is our family history. Learn it. Patterns repeat. Family things come back for each generation. If we're in his family, guess what? It's coming back to us too. We're all going to be able to, in some way, experience this. Let's hope that we learn from our forefathers so we make the right choices. Let's be like Caleb and Joshua when we're out in the desert. Not like 
Cora, or those others. All right, you guys have a great day. Shabbat Shalom. May your hearts be filled with joy, and may you see Messiah and his hope every place you look. Even in the darkness, be the light, because we can shine very easily in this day and age. Y'all have a great day. Shalom.